Go up, they try to contest on the side of Execration, they go for the jug, spinning forward, let's see, the Ursa is going to take a lot of damage, they might be able to take him down, Nando is going to drop down very, very low, one by hit, the hook comes out from Yassi, skills up the hook just for that kill, gets the kills, while Sunstrike comes out on the Ursa in the face, as next in Vietnam, they lose the Ursa, the Weaver gets killed on the side of Execration, in the meantime, as Yassi gets another one, he has his hook available in one second, he can go for it, let's see, hook comes out, they hit the Rubik, do they get this kill, one more hit, they get the kill, triple kill to Yassi, as now comes now comes the Weaver for round two. He's going to try and get a kill on. Well played by Next Gen Vietnam. Off to a very good start. Mid lane. They go for an Astral on this guy in the mid lane as well. They need a little bit of experience. And there they go. Yes, he gets, the, gets a little bit of experience from that creep dying. Uh, not that he needs it too much. But in case he gets spun on, that would be nice to have. Just to get that... Uh, Get a little bit further away in the meantime mid lane looks like the od might be a little bit in trouble to go for the swarm on this guy with that double damage weaver coming into position and he gets the kill on the od hook comes out from yassi with that tp rotation but he doesn't get to do anything with it so that is going to be one dead on the side of next gen with a good little rotation from the beetle boy he's level three himself now doing a lot of damage goes and tries to pick up the enemy's bounty room we do see yassi moving into position to try and contest him but he does have his he does have his uh, what's it called so could you have in case of emergency? It looks like Yassi wants to try and take this fight. The double damage does end. Let's see if Yassi can get this kill. They need to outplay each other. He needs to dodge out that hook. He's going the other way. Trying to escape. Hook comes out. Not hitting on him. So could you going to be available in a few seconds. Let's see if, ya if Yassi gets committed on with Kimuel, he goes in, he goes for this Kuchi, he tries to get a couple of hits off, does get the hits off, but now he's going to be in trouble as the Wind Ranger comes in from the sidelines, and looks like this is going to be a dead bug, as indeed Yassi yes, will get a mega kill streak by securing that Weaver kill. Sunstrike picks it up and send away so Eve Dota will survive on this Timber Soul and not be punished for the Ursa kill. Yes, in the meantime, in the top lane, looks like this guy, he goes to the other lane, he just, he just died in the bottom lane, goes to the top lane, he's like, okay, I'll, I'll be able to farm in the top lane now, but that is going to be denied as well as the Juggernaut will go in, spin in his face, the Weaver comes in as well, and the Ursa dies yet again. Well, this Ursa's early game has kind of been destroyed now, but I guess that's, that's just the life he's living. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Double edge came out that horrible. Nando in the meantime, he's uh, just you know moving himself from the jungle back into the lane, trying to secure himself some levels and farm as well as much as possible. And meanwhile, in the mid lane looks like the Mogul gets dropped down on side of execution. They get the punch kill in return, and let's see the Weaver tries to go in and get a kill on that OD. He needs to take away the bugs. The Weaver. Tim was on the bottom and very low in terms of HP. Those region up slowly, but that double edge is doing a lot of work against him. And the Centaur Runner, he's going for the maximum region. He does have a lot of, he has so many lasses from the top lane where he was all alone that he can le he can lane against this Timber Soul now. Usually this is a lane matchup that's awful for the Centaur, but he just has so much more gold that it, it makes it a little bit easier. I'm sure as I say that, in terms of net worth, they are even, but you're supposed to have almost no farm on the Centaur in this matchup. And we'll see. The Centaur might be a little bit in trouble. Let's go for the Stampede. He might be able to go on the Timber Soul again, but they, they need to play safe. One wall in death is going to be his doom and death here. We see the Sunstrike come out. Doesn't actually connect on it. A little, a little, a little Timber Chain away, but, you know, four heroes in the lane. There's no way this guy survives when he's that deep, that far under the tower. So a nice little rotation from next gen. Plus, the Pudge is now falling behind. They're sitting on 2k net worth each, whereas the Weaver and the Timbersaw, they're sitting on 3,000. Now, the Juggernaut goes in, finds the Yassi hiding in the trees, goes for a spin, will cut himself through the tree, and hopefully survive. And, well, Nando, they have a good idea that he's not able to survive this. The Pudge, in the meantime, goes for this member on the, on the Timbersaw. They TP in on the Centaur. They go for the double edge. And once again, they make a little bit, and that means that he's going to be an easy hero to kill. Lift into Sunstrike, and that is going to be the death of the OD. Nearby, or oh, just just walk into the pit, guys. Walk into the pit. Just do it. Just do it. Keep well. Walk into the pit, please. Nope. Looks like yours will get away with that sneaky Roshan. The Timbers on the meantime will be taken down as well. So they get both the ages as well as this Timbers all kill. They've been longing. We'll have his blink up in 200 gold as well. So blink initiation is going to be a thing that they can use on next in Vietnam very soon. The OD is trying to finish up his false stuff, which will be up momentarily with that Midas helping him out to get some gold. The Wind Ranger, just like Kane Boots for now, same thing for the Pudge, just Boots. Trying to finish up a false stuff as well to be able to get some room between him and the Timber Soul potentially. Astral comes out from the Rubik, looks like that's going to be a dead Pudge as well, indeed. 
that does enough damage to bring him down so a bring will be able to get a free little kill there and meanwhile bottom lane the drone gets hit by a shackle does get the spin off in time afterwards they go for the stampede in the meantime but they don't do enough damage to actually bring him down fast enough and that is going to be the juggernaut escaping meanwhile the weaver comes in from the sidelines does try to go in the wind ranger but he just tps out in front of him makes sure that he doesn't give any kills to the side of execration makes sense as well i see oh who comes up yeah see trying to grab that weaver maybe maybe Nando in the meantime is sitting in the sidelines waiting for his healing uh, wall to be available again and let's see the weaver gets jumped on. Centaur blinks forward, gets that stomp off and that is going to be a dead weaver as he gets killed. Having that sentry ward available put in place already. Remember the channeling spell and also Ursa because whenever he pops his enrage he hits a lot harder and you don't do any damage to him anyways. Invoker gets hooked and shackled in the mid lane looks like that is going to be a dead Voka as they want him in the grave in the ground and he will go that way radiance middle tower is under attack i can understand the earlier the, the earlier the better right you you want to be able to use that time lapse to save heroes like the timber soul who does so much if they have a little radiance bit of extra survivability they can do everything and the centaur goes in gets a nice two man stomp off they get the kill on the weaver instantly with the sanity six clips being committed from the od making sure that they had just enough burst damage to bring him down without letting the time lapse slide before that and that is going to be a dead weaver they're now going to the mid lane try once again to go for the push they still have the aegis on the ursa for at least a minute or so so let's see that tower drop down fortification comes out execration they are in the area with a lot of heroes they're even rotating in the juggernaut but i'm not sure they want to do this he's keeping it in front of the tower goes to the deny and anda will be successful doing so the sense on the meantime tries to blink for tries to catch the invoker in the back lines not actually going to be happening though and let's see the timber saw gets hit by this member astral comes out from a bank keeping him alive he goes for the steal on the push gets a rod instead not really the best in the world but you gotta try sometimes maybe you get the hook maybe you don't but uh this time that is going to be a you don't get a hook Nice astral save on the timber saw though, making sure that he didn't get killed. That's always something you don't expect that uh, astral saves comes on the enemy team. Centaur goes in, another two man stun comes out. He gets a hit hit on the timber saw. The timber saw gets taken down instantly. Astral comes out from the OD, trying to just set up for some more kills. Juggernaut is going to be controlled. Time lapse comes out from the Weaver. They go for healing ward and they will slowly heal up on everyone. In the meantime, the OD is still trying to jump in, still trying to fall off for someone. The Ursa blinks forward. Goes for the initiation on the Rubik. The Rubik will be taken down and Rage has already been used. The Aegis will finally be popped. And that is going to be the last couple of seconds the Aegis was. Alright. Looks like the Roshan will be up fairly early. It's five minutes to go before it will respawn. Top lane, they're trying to set up for the Weaver. They go and they get a stomp off with that Centaur again. And that is just everywhere on the Centaur. Setting up for kill after kill after kill with those Hoofstorm initiations. And he will continue to do so throughout this game. That is going to be the whole net worth from the side of Execration gone and in the ground as next in Vietnam. They are now 2,000 gold ahead, 4,000 experience ahead. They will go for another tier 1 tower on the top lane. Meanwhile, the mid lane is going to be pushed out by Nando's Jug. And the bottom lane tower might be taken now, but the Timbersaw doesn't really do too much tower damage. So once the Centaur comes back into position, he will be stopped from moving. And here comes the Urza, here comes the Centaur. They go for Hoof Stomp. The Centaur is still going to be alive for the moment. They have another blink available in 8 seconds. Do they commit for this kill? That is the question. The Timbersaw, oh, he he misses his timber chain that's not good there's no trees on the other side there's no trees here guys no trees they are all gone so the timber will be taken down lift comes out from the rubik onto the ursa ursa goes in gets a kill on the rubik sunstrike will miss the center in the meantime might be a little bit in trouble needs to get that bug away so he can go for a bling away in the meantime then juggernaut gets sent in from the sidelines the od goes in pops the sanity's eclipse the weaver gets hit by a shackle and that is a dead weaver as well as execration they lose four heroes and they don't even get the kill on the ursa to at least make it a little bit better Oh boy. I mean, you know, a kill on the punch at the least, but they didn't get anything else. They lost four here. Change your mind if you'd rather feel like you want to go for the Bloodstone. Um, in case he gets like a good uh, a good fight going for him, he gets 2,000 gold in the fight or something like that. A Bloodstone would be much more likely. Let's see if Tim gets hit by Shackle. The OD goes in on him. They set up with that ultimate with the Centaur Stampede. And again, the Timber Soul just drops down. Still the better option, but I guess in case he gets dismembered, um, the Ulsa won't really be helpful because obviously you die within the dismember. Um, so that's that's that, that's what they will have to deal with. Mid lane, 
They go in on the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut gets hit by that. This member will be taken down. As that is another one dead inside of Fix Creation. Just feels like they've been chased around the map and found and killed everywhere. The Rubik gets killed in the top end as Execration. They try to split push the two lanes, but they end up for chase here. As the Pudge goes in, sees the Weaver in a second. Goes for Hook. Hits the Hook as well. The Weaver is going to be hit by time. That comes out. The Stomp is available. They go for the Stomp. Looks like this Weaver is going to be taken down as the chase is going to be successful. Next gen, they find the Weaver. Oh boy, oh boy. This is going from bad to worse on the side of Execration as they, they're just really just being ex initiated on everywhere on the map. They're losing heroes. The Rubik gets jumped on. Stampede slows them up as well. This Shackle Shack comes up from the win range in the meantime. The Rubik will be taken down. The Timbersaw tries to go in on that Centaur. The Centaur go for, goes for Hoofstam, doesn't hit it. In the meantime, the Juggernaut goes in for an Omni Slash on that Pudge. Will be able to take down the Pudge. The Centaur from the sideline takes a lot of damage. The OD comes in with that Blink Hurricane Pipe being available. He goes on to Nando. Nando has no intelligence left. Nowhere to run. And he will be killed alongside the Timbersaw with that Sanity Eclipse, blowing them to bits. As that is yet again four dead and thought of execration and the only counter kill they got was the pudge. Oh, sanity's eclipse. So they have the control around the pit area. They are the ones with the punch with the hook. The swarm comes out. Tornado comes out as well from the invoker trying to do something. They do have that swarm available. Juggernaut gets hit by a hook. As this punch sets up perfectly for another kill. That is going to be a dead Juggernaut. 50 seconds on the sidelines. No buyback available. So execration they will have to give up. It's going to be a very very hard, hard ask to do as... Where's the damage? That's the question. Where is the damage? They don't have that action on the Weaver, so survivability is going to be a small issue. And here in the bottom lane, he goes to the timeless, gets jumped on, gets hit by that time, uh, what's it called, by the hoof stun from the center one, and he drops down again. Sam P comes out, the OD is going to be in the mid lane trying to find a kill. The Rubik will go for self Astral to give himself a little bit more time. Astral come, well, okay, okay, okay. The OD didn't have any time to waste, he just goes for the Santis Eclipse to get that kill. The Juggernaut will be found in the sidelines, will be killed by the Urus in the meantime. Astro comes out on that Invoker, controlling him, putting him in play. Draft, and they are playing it very, very well against this greedy draft from Execration. Now the OD gets lifted up into the air by that Tornado, who comes out from the Yes, he doesn't hit onto anyone. Gets hit by a little buck in the meantime. Hoofstone comes out onto two people. That is again troublesome as the Weaver as well as the Timbersaw gets taken down. The Centaur hiding himself behind a tree, coming in right at the right time, and again... He, he's trying to get mana, but uh, it's not that easy to do in rage gets pop Cold wall is going to keep him in place. He gets the fusion lob as well by Nando in the meantime The shackle comes out on the Rubik. Rubik will be initiated and he will be killed as well Stomp hits the invoke on the sidelines. The invoker will be killed next. Nando might be a little bit in trouble Doesn't have a spin available. Does have his mantis all on cooler for the next one second Tries to go for the mantis style. Will heal up with his strand. Looks like he's going to be fine for now. The OD Goes in very, very deep. BKB is not available anymore. He does have the self astral in case of emergency. The Weaver comes into the side. Stampede comes out. They get that extra little bit of movement speed. Nando will be killed in the Juggernaut. The Timbersaw comes in from the sidelines. Goes for a Timber Chain. Doesn't hit anything in the meantime. That's going to be a creep in the way. So yes, he cannot go for an easy hook. He goes for the hook. Hits the Weaver. They go for the hook stomp as well. GG will play. Gets called. As that is going to be the end of this first game. Execration. They get demolished. All right, well played by Next Gen Vietnam. First game goes to them, and let's see if Execration they can pick up a next, pick up a new draft and go from there on forward. As this first game definitely looked very, very promising for the side of Next Gen Vietnam. Maybe they had a good sleep or something like that. We'll see if Execration they can they can pull it back and win this best of three series. As it was, like, this is like the the matchup you would usually expect the sniper to have a good time. He he is supposed to win against OD, but OD is sitting on ten lasts, six denies, and the sniper is only sitting on three lasts himself. So he's apparently having a little bit of a tough time in this in this Last matchup. Kind, Maybe we'll be able to get a little bit back against it, but the OD is having the lanes. I I kind of I kind of count the access as a, as one of the lanes as well. Oh, as I say that, Abaddon bottom lane looks like he's going to be dropping down yet again. He does try to survive, does try to juke himself around, but lift the slow from the Omni Knight with both the Arb of Venom as well as the Degen Aura and that spin creeps under the tower. He might not be able to deny all of these creeps on the Juggernaut, but he's going to do his very best. And looks like that's going to be a creep camp pushing into the Abaddon. While this is happening, the Abaddon, he is in trouble. He's going to be run down. He's going to be killed by this duo squad, the Rubik as well as the Omni Knight. They get another kill on the Abaddon. And that is just in time to lose this. 
Wind Ranger gets spotted out on the sidelines. He goes, oh, he goes to two skill points in Wind Ranger. I'm sure that's not the idea. That was that was just a panic move there from the Wind Ranger, but that's going to be a very costly one. As skilling up Wind Run twice, that is not good. I mean, you know, one point in Wind Run, sure, why not? But having a second point in it, that is useless. You only skill it up to be able to. Well, you only skill it up when you have nothing else to skill up because the 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 slow effect is the only thing you gain plus the duration on the wind run so it's it's not quite worth skilling up that's uh that's kind of sad that's kind of very sad kind of small misplay from the side of next in vietnam um that's you know the abaddon is having a tough time the wind ranger makes a very big mistake there and it just feels like the early game from next in vietnam is being destroyed already as the od will get a kill on the sniper in the mid lane with that astral securing that death of the sniper so another kills the side of execration they have five and zero so it seems like they they have they have just shaken up that first game shaken it off and now it's going to be the second game they're going to be the ones in the lead and they want to just bring the destruction back to the side of next gen vietnam all right if we take a look at the net worth uh, as well at the moment the juggernaut is number one bottom lane looks like he's up to get another kill on that abron they go in with the axe they go for calls while trying to turn things around but it's already too late the abron is already dead it looks like the axe might be a little bit in trouble himself running as fast as possible and they go for smoking on the side of execution in the meantime three men smoke they want to use that omni slash as fast as possible to set up for a kill possibly house. on the sniper in the meantime the sensor is rotating around to the mid lane does have a stampede available i'm not sure what they're looking to do but looks like they want to use this axe as well as the sensor to gank the od so the sniper trying to set up a gank on the od is not going to pay off as they tp in five people on execution they get the kill on the sniper up in the sky but it's going to take a while because he gets any kind of um, valuable item stampede comes out in the meantime in the top the bait the axe comes in from the silence goes in sets up for a jump they go with a call they go on the juggernaut it looks like a juggernaut is going to be controlled the shield comes out from the axe in the meantime he goes for healing wall on the ground looks like nanda will be able to survive and they got a kill on the app on the rubik is trying to get himself away in the meantime does have another part to kill available gets jammed on gets dunked in the face as the axe will have none of this foolishness he will get the kill on the rubik as well one for one trade off in the bottom and hardly worth it for the side of next gen though as losing your hero and only getting a one for one trade off might not be worth it they go for Radiance top Rubik steals the power down. shot. That's a pretty nice belt to, to steal from the enemy team. I believe it. if you fade bolt and power shot, you can actually just kill a creep wave instantly. So um, that's pretty nice. It's pretty sweet. The Rubik gets a lot of farm because of this. He's ahead of the Wayne Ranger in terms of items. And, you know, Arcane Boost is complete. He can go for one slash earn pickup very, very soon. The Magnus has had that blink available. He can go and go for that skewer back. They control the Wind Ranger. They lift him up. They don't want to use any excessive spells to get this kill, and they don't have to. Just a power shot, fade bolt combo, and that is going to be a dead win in the late game or whatnot. They're pushing the top lane with this Omni as well, trying to just push it down. They don't know where Nexion is right now as they're rotating around. They're trying to set up for some kills in the mid area, but there's a lot of heroes and execration gathered up. The Magnus goes in, has vision on this cliff. They see these two heroes. They go for the RP. They hit them Wind Ranger will be taken down first. The Axe goes in, gets a call off, but the Guardian Angel came out from the Omni Knight in time. They will make sure that no one gets taken down. The Axe is going to be the one getting initiated on. In the meantime, the Axe goes in, gets a kill on the Juggernaut. Five kill streak will be ended. The Axe gets jumped on by this Magnus. He does still continue to hit him. Let's see if he can get the blink away in time. Shockwave hits him. Looks like they might be able to stop him from moving. The Sanity's Eclipse comes out. Looks like the Axe will be taken down with that tower securing the kill. He does not manage to get a blink away in time. And that is going to be two dead on the side of Nexion and only one on the side of Execration. Maybe more as the Abron gets lifted up into the air. Gets taken down. The ultimate gets popped. Ashwell comes out just to keep him in control a little bit longer. The OD tries to do a little bit of damage on Rampo on this OD but he's not going to keep him in place. The heal comes out from the Omnite and yes, he should be taken down easily at the start. Stampede comes out. The Centaur goes in. Gets a kill on the OD in the meantime. Stampede is not available. He tries to go for TPR. Not happening as the Skewer hits both the Snipers. Wills pushes back the Snipers. The Centaur on. Makes sure he doesn't get the TP away but do, do they even get a kill on anyone okay the shark wave does hit the the sniper the center is still alive on the sidelines he doesn't have enough mana to go in for a jump he goes in gets a double edge off gets a triple kill as the magnus dies as well the center is still alive somehow and he's he's just everywhere shackle comes out they go in on this dragon looks like that's maybe going to be an ultra kill in case he wants to be super greedy oh nando one hit yep ultra kill that is the center just the right place the right time always surviving and that will again just 
play like play out of his mind on that center. Four kills received on this guy. He is suddenly the most farmed here in the game. As that was a lot of gold. I mean, 2,000 gold being changed around, and pretty much the OD. The OD is going to reflect so much damage back onto himself with that blade mill. The OD might be killed just yet now, and indeed he will be. The Ruby gets killed. The OD and the Omni Knight both drop down as well as next gen. They at least get those three kills. They might not have gotten the Juggernaut in the top lane, but they get. It doesn't really make too much difference. Um, but you know, it gives you more HP, it gives you more regions, so why not? And looks like he might be trying to get a jump on Nando here. Could get a good jump. Blade Mill comes out. That is going to be a dead juggernaut instantly as he gets killed. The RP comes out from EU Dota, but the Jonah will already be killed. Does need a dunk to kill him. As those spins will be more than enough. That Empower is going to be turned around against that juggernaut. As like I said, the Empower just makes him die a lot faster to that blade mill. And indeed, that is exactly what happened. The Ruby gets hit by an assassinate by the sniper. Looks like that is going to be the third one dead on side of Execration as next in Vietnam. I'm not sure what's happening on the side of Execration, but they are being run down. Not going to be able to get the kill. All right, the Magnus goes in from the sidelines. He does have a skill available in five seconds. They see the axe, but the axe goes back in. Goes for the call. He's going to be alive, courtesy of that Abaddon still. They try to get the first kill. Not able to get anything. The Aspen will save the Juggernaut's life for now. The Omnislash comes out on that center. He tries to go for TP back home. Will not be happening as the Sanity's Eclipse will stop that dream from being ever true. Let's see the center will be killed. The axe one might be the next one to drop. He goes for a call. The Blade Mill will reflect some damage, but he will be killed either way. The Magnus stuck on the cliff for now. Omnislash assassinate comes out onto the Omni Knight. The Omni Knight gets killed in the end, but they lose three heroes inside of next in Vietnam as finally execration. They get a fight that turns out in their favor. 2,000 gold. Front looks like that is going to be the case. They go on him. And the Astral comes out after the ultimate gets forced out on the Abaddon. The Axe looks to go for the initiation. Doesn't quite get it off just yet. Looks like Nando might be in trouble, but the Apothic Shield will keep the Axe safe. Tempe comes out. Not going to be good enough as the Juggernaut will be sent into the Astral Imprisonment. Will be alive for now. Nando gets healed up by Aping. He's still alive. The Healing Ward gets put down. The, um, the Assassinate gets poked a little bit with that Sniper. But in the end, they'll have to back themselves up. They don't get the kill yet again on that Jug. Omnislash comes out, looks like the Jonah will be torn out afterwards, he will be pulled back, they don't get the kill on anyone here, the Omnislash is not going to be good enough to get any kills, Shackle comes out, very good Shackle, who some comes out, looks like the Jonah will but finally be killed, Dunk comes out, assassinated as well, they want that Jonah dead, Eve Dodo goes in for an he's onto the center, the center will be killed next, the Astral comes out, the sniper gets hit once and the high ground will not be able to give him that miss chance that he needs, he gets killed as well, the sniper is dead, the wind ranger is dead, the only one who survives is going to be the axe as it execration they turn this fight around again all right execration they're now going to look a lot better than they did a second ago as the od and the juggernaut they are the two most found heroes in the game the jug has that my, uh, that blink available the od does have his hurricane pike and his blink available in a second they're trying to take down the tier two town in the mid lane they might look to go for it skewer comes out from eve dota doesn't actually hit onto yassi though he does have his ultimate available but he needs to be careful this is maybe a little bit too far here comes the axe though he sets up on that od the od is doing a lot of damage to himself he will be healed up though oh the sanity eclipse with that blade mill reflecting back the damage that was not the play he wanted to make as the OD will drop down. They do get the kill on the axe, but at what cost? Losing the OD is a little bit sad though. The Abaddon will walk up to the high ground, you know, cliff movement speed, why not? He goes up, he will survive, and let's see if they can get any turnaround kills. The Wind Ranger is trying to chase the Rubik in the meantime. The Apothex here will keep him safe for now. They go for a little shockwave in the back. They go in, Skewer comes out and tries to cliff. The Wind Ranger doesn't actually happen though. They go for the lift now, and now they get the cliff up. So the Wind Ranger is going to be on the high ground. He will be controlled and he will be slowly murdered on that cliff. Nice nice little play there from Mexico. Axe does have almost a Crimson Guard completed. The Abaddon, Mechanism plus a Medallion up and running. The Wind Ranger as well looking on that urn. Nothing on top of that though. Rampo goes in, gets an Astral off. Looks like this Axe might be a little bit in trouble. Goes for, a, goes for a Taunt as well, tries to keep himself safe. Goes for a Lift. Omnislash comes out. The Axe is going to take a lot of damage, but it's not going to be good enough. The Axe is still alive in the back lines. Goes for a Dunk on one of the creeps. Tries to get a little bit of room between him and Nando on that jug, but... It's not going to be enough. The axe will finally drop down. Takes a long time, but they get the kill in the meantime. The OD in the back lines gets propelled up. He does not have the Aegis on him. He gets killed by the sniper in the back lines. The sniper gets killed as the Rubik goes in. Gets a dunk off. Gets two dunks off as the Rubik is killing everyone with that stolen dunk from the axe. And that is going to be a lot of dead bodies in the side. He gets hit by a, sh uh, by a, by a what's it called? He gets hit by a shackle shot. 
by the Wind Ranger, but the tier, one, tier 3 tower is going to be taken down slowly but surely. They go for Skewer back on that Wind Ranger. He's going to be controlled. He will be killed as Kimmel goes in. Another dunk. That is going to be the third dunk in a row that hits and kills as the Rubik will just continue doing so. He's going to be moving towards his Akinem set on Nexus. Well, I mean, why can you blame this guy? He's been having a fun time with all of the spells, so might as well continue moving into some big spells. Unstoppable kills people. They go for lift. They do have that skew available. They will skew him up onto that cliff. He will try to go for the TP back home, but not going to be happening. They have the vision up, up there, and they will go for Nashville. The Wind Ranger will be killed slowly but surely. Again, it seems like that is that, that is going to be a thing. That the Wind Ranger always gets put on a cliff and killed. Lane tries to get a jump on something. The Axe goes for, goes for a taunt. Tries to get a jump on that Dragonon and falls him out of position. Not going to be happening though. He gets Ashwell. Nando is going to take a lot of damage from that sniper in the meantime though. And it looks like that is not really going to be the most fun thing in the world. He gets taunted up again. Ashwell comes up. Keeping him alive. Another, another, what's it called? Another trap. She gets, gets shot up. He goes for that healing ward. Gets hit by a hoof. Some of the means on the journal is going to be taken. Now that's going to be the Aegis dropping. Yasi still does have a little bit of HP left. His, um, his ultimate did get used already. The Axe goes in for Torn again on that jump. Man Magnus goes in for an RP. The Abaddon will be taken down instantly. The Sandy's Eclipse has been used. Nice Jackal on the Odious Wool as the Magnus in the back lines. The Hoofstorm nice. comes out from the center. He doesn't hit it onto anyone though. The Axe goes in for another call on that sniper. The sniper doing a lot of damage onto Nando, trying to kill, kill him, trying to finally bring him down, but they don't have the damage. The, sh the shrapnel comes out, the sh shackle shrapnel comes out from the wind, it doesn't hit onto anyone though. The axe goes in, gets a two man torn off. That's going to be big. The Ruby gets killed instantly. The arm is going to be in trouble. He gets killed by that sniper in the back. Line. So the sniper's doing so much damage to everyone. They try to keep them alive. The OD gets killed. The skewer back comes out from the Magnus, trying to keep himself alive. The Omni Knight will be the third one to be followed and killed. As the sniper is just doing so much damage in these fights, he's allowed to just hit people freely. 8,000 damage with four shrapnels and just a lot of right click damage with that Mjolnir. So, Execration, pushing high ground is going to be very difficult against an axe. They're going for Stampede, they go for a jump as well. And looks like the Magnus is going to be found and executed in the jungle. Four dead on the side of Execration as again. The net worth is going to be spot in time. They try to burn down that tier 3 tower at the very least before backing up. The sniper is going to do as much damage as he, as he possibly can. But they decide to back themselves up. They don't want to be greedy. The OD will keep at least one person here in position. The shackle comes out. The Abaddon pops his ultimate. Will be fine for now. But looks like this guy will have to give up his life. As the OD will just hit him as much as possible. Steal all of that intelligence. Steal it all. Take it all. <laughs> just take everything. 40 total stolen intelligence from one hero. Why not? Every single time, Shackle comes out from the Wind Ranger, trying to do some damage, he goes for a power shot, at least hits a little bit onto that Rubik. I'll see, Axe goes in, tries to go for a jump, not actually going to be happening this time around, goes for a taunt on that Juggernaut in the meantime, he goes for a lot of damage, hits the Guardian Angel, comes out, trying to keep him alive, the Wind Ranger goes in, tries to go for a Shackle, he drags back that Omni Slash, Juggernaut, the Juggernaut goes for a blink back into towards the mid lane, will have to back himself up, Rampo gets taunted up this time around, looks like he's going to be in danger, he will be killed, as that is one dead inside of Execration, two man hoofs on from the Centaur comes in, they want to go in, they want to chase the heroes, they get another kill on the Omni Knight, the Rubik tries to go for TP back out, looks like he's going to be able to do so, oh, so close to a buyback. TB's into Dyer's the sidelines. Maybe down. a little bit too close to the enemy. Astro comes out on the axe. In the meantime, keeping him under control. The sniper tries to bring down that Melorax. In Radiant's the meantime, the Rubik goes very, very deep. Maybe a little bit too deep on this Rubik. As Jazzy pops his souls. May will be alive for now. They go in for a stampede with that sensor. They miss the hoof stomp. As the Abaddon will be a little bit in trouble. As that is a lot of intelligence being stolen Radiant's by the OD. He's setting up 52 stolen intelligence. It's going to be able to secure a kill on that Wind Ranger. The Wind Ranger will be the first one to drop. Both Stampedes has already been used by the side of Next Gen. They need to back themselves up to their base. He'll lose his first life. The Stolen Shrapnel comes out from the Rubik in the meantime. As he shoots it back onto the enemy. Keeps them at bay. Keeps them from blinking in. And let's see. The Shrapnel will disappear now. The Axe goes in. Goes for a taunt. Magnus goes in for an RP in the meantime. On that sniper. Hits him back. Takes him back in. The Sentence Eclipse comes out from the OD. Brings down the Axe as well as the sniper. Instantly the Abaddon is dead as well. They bring them all down. Force the buybacks instantly. They will be able to bring down those Melorax. The Stolen Stampede comes out. The sniper is going to be run down. They have the gem that they took away from the enemy. The sniper will be killed a second time. The Axe goes in for the call. Will not be able to survive. GG gets called as next gen. The high ground defense was so strong, but not good enough if they give up Stampede to the enemy team. And that is going to be Execration finally bursting through and finishing off this game. Alright guys, looks like we will have a game of three as Execration. They fight their way back in the second game. It was not easy by any means, but they will be alive for now.
And it's going to be the next game coming up in just a second. I am at Kingstone. I hope you enjoyed so far. We will have the third and deciding game in this playoffs match between Execration and Next Gen Vietnam. And see who will drop down to the lane. We will now move back to the lane. The Legion Commander himself does have his boots plus Windlace completed. So he's very fast, very, very mo mobile. The IO is trying to finish out this camp of creeps. The Ursa will come in to take one of those creeps away. He will be hit by an overwhelming odds in the meantime. Tries to run down the IO as the Ursa wants to get this kill. Goes for the Earth Shark. May be able to get the kill. And indeed, they get the first spot on the IO. They're now going the Legion Command as well. Get some hits on him. And it looks like the Earth is going to be successful making that move in there. And finally gets something in return. It's all the same to me. That was nicely done there. Clockwork in the meantime does have his battery assault doing its thing. The Slada's moving into position trying to follow him down. He does have his guidance sprint available in a second. Cox is up in a moment. Let's see, does he get the cock block off? The Slada's moving him down trying to get that, that crush off. He gets the crush off. Looks like this is going to be a dead clockwork as indeed he do, did not get the cocks off in time. Waited too long. I'm not sure if he would have gotten it off, but if you if you ever a very lovely time with all of these skill points, all of these... All of this free family stadium on 22 lasts. The Weaver is getting lasted. It's kind of difficult for the Timbersaw to deny creeps because the way Timbersaw works is, you know, you want to have your reactive armor stacks up and running, so you have to pretty much push the wave. And without a quelling blade, you don't really out you don't out damage the Weaver, so denying creeps is kind of difficult. But he can at least make sure that he gets free farm himself, and the Weaver gets contested as much as possible. In the back lines, looks like the lion was a little bit deep on a mission trying to stop this jungle from being found, but that is not going to be happening. The lion is going to be taken out of commission. He tried to get some wards out as well, having two active observer wards, but, well, obviously didn't really get anything done. In the meantime, the IR has been stacking a lot of the camps. The ancients are stacked once, so the Naga Siren does have a good amount of farm again complete in this jungle. He's sitting on 25 last. It's the Invoker still ahead of him at the moment, but... Um, as long as the Nagasan gets an even amount of farm, I don't think it matters too much. The Earth in the bottom looks, looks, looks like he's going to be taken down by this Clockwork. As the Clockwork moves in, gets the battery assault off, and that is a dead Ursa. As the Clockwork will finish his Tranquil Boots with that, gets a little bit more movement speed, and the Ursa is definitely suffering in this lane. Goes for us. He does have a decent amount of levels. He's managing to pull a lot and at least deny a lot of experience from this IO slash Legion Commander, but both of these teams they have level 4 in this lane the IO gets jumped on now they do have a hex available Sunstrike comes on the Sunstrike will hit him as he doesn't get the tether off it was on cooldown so the Legion commander will lose his little ball of lightning and Kim all on the line will go for the little victory dance just to say that hey man I killed your ball of lightning <laughs> all right well like I said, this game, they have loads of setup for the Sunstrike, so as long as they can continue giving this Invoker easy Sunstrike kills, that is going to be a very, very good trade-off, because the Invoker is getting free farm in the mid lane, he's getting good last hits, and if he gets those leech kill with the Sunstrikes, then he can continuously move a bottle. Iron Talon, Poor Man Shield, his boots as well. He's sitting on almost 2,000 gold on top of that, so he is well on the way towards his Radiance, and I don't really think it's likely that Execration will contest in this game, because they don't quite have the heroes to contest him. They are too much focused on keeping this Ursa alive in the bottom lane. He will survive some more farm, and looks like they, they really want to just make sure this guy gets that blink timing as fast as possible. The Ursa is going to have a little bit of farm in the top lane, but he's being contested. They go on him, and Rage comes out. Looks like the Legion Command is going to be in trouble. He will lose the duel as that Enrage. Oh, boy. Nando, that reaction time with his Enrage, shutting down the Legion Commander, punishing him heavily as he will give away a duel. Legion Commander not really doing anything in this early game. Akinim's up in 900 gold on the Invoker, so it's going to be hard. I mean, it feels like already you're in, the, you're in the position on the side of Next Gen Vietnam where you're kind of just thinking about, okay, guys, we need we need to maybe just try and secure ourselves some farm. We need to try and use the Legion Commander to get some dual victories. But the most important thing is just make sure the Nagasaren gets farm because he is everything they have right now. Bottom lane. The duel gets used by the Legion Commander, but again, the duel is going to be won by the enemy. As that is going to be the Timbersaw winning the duel. In the meantime, Eve Dota is going to take a lot of damage from that battery assault. Will heal up, gets dueled up. In the meantime, he needs to get out of those cocks, but looks like he will be a little bit in trouble. He will be pushed back, and indeed, he will be taken down. That is a dead Timbersaw. A little bit too greedy. They're fighting into four heroes. Duel and everything. I mean, it took a long time to kill the Timbersaw, but they can definitely kill him, mainly with that battery assault. Is that bad? 
Let's see. The Weaver moves down to the bottom. He does enough, have enough gold for the Dragonlance. They go for Hookshot onto Indo. They go for Relocate as well. They want to use this Legion Command. They want to get another dual victory off. He has a dual available in two seconds. So it looks like Kimmel is going to be the target. He goes in. He spots him out. Tornado comes out. Rambo tries to keep the Legion, the Lion alive. Not really going to be happening though. On the side of Execration, they have two of them already. They just need that third one. The Timbers are still trying to bank up his gold for the Bloodstone, but. I mean, since he's died a couple of times the last little while, it will take a little while longer. Hookshot comes out from Yassi, misses those, so they're not going to be able to initiate onto the symbols of the swarm. Will be taken away, and Indo in the meantime, Crush comes out, the Legion Commander is going to be a little bit in trouble. They go in, Tornado comes out, Meteor comes on top of that, that is going to be a lot of damage. As the Legion dies, the Thing of Death comes out, they will lose the Clockwork as well, that is two dead on the side of next in Vietnam. The Timeless comes out from the Weaver, keeping himself alive. In the meantime, it's a creation, they'll put... Hex as well, they find him and they get the kill on him as they press the attack from the Legion Command is going to be a little bit too late. They, he can only take away one of the stuns, but they have so many, so they still get the kill on him. They relocate, activate a little bit too late as well, so the Naga Sun will be killed either way. They try to go on the Ion next, they go on him. Legion Commander goes for a duel on Zanando, but again, the duel will be won by the Bear, and that is four dead inside of Next Gen Vietnam. They'll lose the fifth one as well as they initiated, they tried to keep the Io alive desperately, but they end up losing four heroes for, for that. That attempt and they just Dying gave everything up to the side of execration 2000 gold going in the pockets of execration Stop this guy from having an impact he can only push out one lane the naga siren will be stopped in the other lanes because of the lion so this is a beautiful lion pick all right, let's see. They're going for high ground. They want to take down the Metalrax. They have taken down the tier three tower already. Next in Vietnam, they need to go in and look for a counter initiation. They Radiant's need to stop this from happening. Even though is turning them away with all of his spells being shut out, that Bloodstone being available as well. He's very tanky. Nando, Alacrity gets you. Gonna make the same mistake. I'm not gonna give any more dual damage to the enemy team, and the Metalrax will be taken down. So execration, they get a very easy grab. They take a tower. They take a Rax. They might lose the Ursa here, but that's just going to be the that's just going to be the Aegis burning. Enrage pops out. Looks like Nano's still going to be fine for now. Gets a couple more hits off. That is Enrage on cooldown, though. He does have his BKB available. He needs to pop that BKB. He needs the help of his team. He goes to the BKB. Duel comes out. Looks like the Legion Command again goes for a duel. This is going to be troublesome, though. The duel will be won by Nando again. The Weaver will be killed next to him. Yazi gets hit by a tether from the eye, trying to keep him alive, but no, not happening. The Clockwork will drop. The Tornado comes out. The eye is going to be controlled. Sunstrike on top of him. He will die as well. Fall down inside of next in Vietnam as they lose everyone. I believe the duel was... Did the duel... Okay, it looks like the Legion Command again goes and tries to do some damage on Zanando, but it's just not ever happening. The Legion Commander will go for the buyback. Iron Weaver is already both dead. The Nagasan goes for the slave in the meantime, but you only delay the inevitable as the Rax will be taken down no matter what. There's no way you stop this from happening. The BKB is still available on Nando, so he's not going to be in a troublesome situation. His enrage is available in 10 seconds. The Clockwork gets jumped on. Nando will go for the kill with that Urshark. They force the buyback off this Clockwork again, and the Na Nagasan will now be running. 40 dual damage on this guy. He's hitting like a truck. Let's see. In the meantime, apparently the Courier got killed. I'm not sure. Was that? Wait. I'm not sure how the Courier died, but the Courier died. Weave in the meantime gets jammed on by the Starlight, gets executed as well as now they're moving down the mid lane. Once again, the Timber Sword is going to be in the front lines with that Shiva Scott available. 22. Um, 22 bloodstone charges as well, so this guy is not going to die anytime soon. Nagasan gets jumped on. His song of the sign is still on cooldown. They found him and they will kill him 60 seconds without the Naga. You will have to use the buyback definitely, as there's no going back from this one. They go in for the tornado. They hit it onto both the clockwork as well as the Legion Commander. They blow away the clockwork with that finger of death from the line. Good game gets called, as that is the end. Legion Commander gets taken out of commission as well. That is. The end of the game. Next in Vietnam, they will call the GG as they have nothing left to give. They can buy back the Weaver, they can buy back the Naga, but the end result will be the same. They have lost too much to be able to fight back into this game as Execration. They'll take away the third game in style, and that is going to be 2 to 1 as Execration will move on further. And next in Vietnam, they'll drop down to the lower bracket. So, despite having a good showing in the second game and in the first game as well, playing very well, it's not going to be good enough as Execration, they will still win.